Questions about the origin of animal life have long plagued thoughtful minds. One man who's devoted himself to unraveling the mystery is Mitchell Sogan. I'm obsessed with learning where we came from. And what I mean by that, not who your mother and father is and, or your grandparents, but rather where did the organisms come from that gave rise to complex animals like man, other species. As an evolutionary biologist, Sogan pursues these questions at the nation's oldest marine station, the Marine Biological Laboratory at Woods Hole on Cape Cod. Working here, Sogan was quick to take advantage of promising advances in genetics and computer science. Yes, take these are this, um, what you diatoms from Nebraska. They're alkalophiles. Go ahead, Jenny, have a look. Um, As new so technology became available, Sogan decided to search the genes of different animals. We should be able to get a sequence from these things. Mm -hmm. To see if he could demonstrate which one gave rise to all the others. In looking for origins of animals, particularly from the perspective of a molecular evolutionist, you could take a top-down approach in which you say, I recognize that the first animals certainly were not cows or pigs or, or humans. They must have been something much more simple. So the top-down approach would be to try and predict which of the various animals that we know about, most likely from marine environments, are those that are likely to be early animals. Okay, so let's go after our sponge. Okay. In the 1980s, Sogan set himself a challenging task to discover what creature lay at the base of the animal kingdom. Oh, wow. Both of these sponges look pretty good for this time of year, I think, Monica. At the time, some scientists suspected the sponge. To solve the mystery, Sogan decided to look where few had looked before inside the sponge's genetic code. So let's take the sponge home. Right. Let's take the sponge back to the lab and go to okay. work. First, he would have to get a clear view of the DNA inside their cells. It was laborious work, a painstaking process known as gene sequencing. So what we want to do is get some of the healthier tissue here. So we're going to take just the tips. Genetic sequences are very much like blueprints for constructing an organism. It defines everything that there is to know in order to generate a body plan or to carry out metabolisms or physiology. You have a set of genetic blueprints that defines who you are. I have a slightly different set of genetic blueprints that defines me. It's very much like the blueprints for building buildings or cars or whatever it is you have to have a plan for making. Sogan compared the genetic blueprints of sponges to those of other organisms. Just this physical agitation would be enough to disrupt and disintegrate the cells, and we ought to be able to get the DNA out of there pretty easily. Yeah, he focused on a gene they had in common. But genes are not identical, and their subtle differences would be telling. If the genes of two animals revealed little variation, the animals were closely related. By grouping animals in this way, Sogan could trace a family tree. The animal at the base of the tree would be ancestral, or basal. For a long time, biologists argued that sponges were basal to all other animals in an evolutionary tree. But there really wasn't any objective, certain way to make that claim until the advent of molecular sequencing capabilities. Millions of years of evolution could be deciphered if only the genes would give up their secrets. Sogan was determined to find the first animal, the ancestor common to us all, but he knew the challenges were daunting. We 
pick out genes that we think are appropriate candidates to study, and we precisely determine the sequence of that gene from a sponge and compare it to the same gene that you find in a jellyfish, compare that to the same gene that you find in a fly, a fish, a frog, a human, etc. The gene's code is written in a series of four letters, thousands of characters long. Sogan focused on one particular gene to see how it changed and varied in the DNA of different animals. Honing in on a specific region of the gene, he began a search that could lead to insights about the evolution of animal life. As he churned through sequence after sequence, animal after animal, the family tree was slowly revealed. At the end of the long and arduous process, Sogan looked at the bottom of the tree and found his answer. At the base of the entire animal kingdom lay the sponge. Sponges lie at a critical juncture in the evolution of more complex life forms on this planet. They're clearly basal to the other animals. They come from a unicellular world, and that's a major achievement, because now you can imagine development of greater organismal complexity. In this particular state now, sponges had already laid the seeds for the evolution of animals that you find distributed throughout the animal world. And the very fact that sponges lie at the base of the animals means that all other animals in some way, shape, or form would have come out of this simple architecture of an organism.